Hello everyone, today I just want to tell you who Lord Jesus Christ is. I just want to introduce who Lord Jesus Christ is and what he did while he was alive in this earth. Lord Jesus Christ was a very great teacher. He was a very good prophet. He was a very good man. And he was always guiding people. He was always leading people. And he lived among Israelites and he taught among Israelites. But uh, the main thing that I want to tell you is who is Lord Jesus Christ? According to Jesus. So this Jesus uh, is mentioned to be born of virgin without having any sexual intercourse between a husband and a wife. So he is thought to be a son of a virgin means there was no amalgamation of ovaries and there was no amalgamation of sperm. So he was totally born out of a new way, you know. And uh, even his father and mother, they just realized that uh, he was just born out without having any sex. So his uh, father had actually tried to avoid his wife. But what happened was uh, later on in his dreams or later on due, due to various kind of divine intervention, it was found out that this lady, Mary, was actually trying to give birth to Jesus Christ with a virgin birth. So she was virgin and she was pregnant with this Lord Jesus Christ. So she just gave birth to Jesus, but uh, an angel told that, you know, this Jesus would be recognized as son of God. So Jesus Christ roamed around telling to various kind of people that he was a son of God. And he was not only a son of God, because he, but he was also a son of man. And that is a very unique personality and there is a very unique way that Jesus Christ represents himself. Some place he's mentioned as son of man in some place he's mentioned as son of God and if you look clearly in the scriptures uh, you you'll find a lot of uh, mysterious things you'll find a lot of uh, incidents uh, even in the Old Testament before Jesus Christ was born it was prophesied that son of man would be born it was prophesied that this son of man would be born uh, son of God would be born so uh, if you look in the other scriptures if you look in the other text uh, in the Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Muslims or any other religious scriptures there might be some concept of son of God but you do not find the concept of son of man so this Jesus Christ is totally different you know he realizes himself as a son of God he realizes himself as a son of man and he identifies himself with becoming a son of God so there is no debate here so there is no any uh, discussion to be done you know whether Jesus Christ was son of God or whether he was son of man the thing is that we have to approve whether he was son of man or son of God according to the scriptures of the Bible it's not that we have to understand according to our human mentality it's not that we have to understand according to our uh, human ways and attributes uh, it's like a biblical literature literary terms you know just like various kind of uh, literary, literary, literature figures like Shakespeare wrote Roman Juliet he wrote Hamlet, he wrote Othello, there, and there was this Leo Tolstoy, and there was this uh, Indian literature writer, you know, this Rabindranath Tagore. In the scriptures, there are a lot of things written, but most of the things are just symbolical. Most of the things are just representation of the uh, reality that has been done in an abstract form. So you find that uh, Jesus Christ is mentioned as son of man, he is mentioned as son of God, but we really can't comprehend it until and unless we try to understand in a biblical way and until and unless we try to understand in a scripture that is mentioned in the uh, old Judaism system. So why is Jesus recognized as son of man? Why is he recognized son of God? Actually, these are not uh, according to human standards. Uh, it's, we should not understand this according to human standard. It's not like son of God uh, means like he was son uh, God had a sex with a woman and he was born out of that woman. Like it's mentioned in many other scriptures in Greek mythology, in uh, Egyptian mythology, in Sumerian mythology, in Babylonian mythology, in maybe there are some mythology even in Hindu texts. But uh, this actually mean, means a title. It's actually a title, you know just given a title uh, just a title of uh, title for Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ 
he himself becoming he himself was god and he became a man and came to earth as a son of god and as a son of man means like in the spirit he was totally god and in the body he was totally a man so he was perfect in both ways he was perfect in spirit soul and body so you see that there is no distinction between uh, jesus christ son of god and jesus christ son of man because god uh, jesus is such a person who is actually a spirit but can take form of a man so jesus christ is an original man he was a original man and we as a human being is said to be have made in the image of god in the image of jesus christ in the old testament in the beginning chapters so we find out that we humans are just images of that jesus christ but we are actually not that god we are not that man original man we are not that original god that is in heaven so jesus christ is like us even in the spirit he has nose he has mouth he has body but this spirit can take form of a man so you see it's totally different from human ways we cannot take form of a spirit or we cannot take form of a flesh and we cannot even you know we cannot become invisible whenever we want but this spiritual being jesus christ can become invisible and he can become visible at the same time because he is omnipresent omnipresent means at the same time he can be present in many uh, places everywhere he can be present another thing is that he is omnipotent omnipotent means he is all powerful he can do anything and he is omniscient omniscient means all knowing he can know everything so you see uh, that is why people have confusion in recognizing jesus christ as son of god son of man and he is god himself he is a father himself you know so it's like uh, people they really don't understand this because they fail to understand the omnipotence of jesus christ omnipresence of jesus christ and omniscient of jesus christ just take an example when he was baptized by john the baptist you know there was this three person at the same time and in the above it was like a father god in the between it was like spiritual holy spirit god and in the bottom it was like this jesus christ son of god but jesus christ is a god himself so he is omnipresent he can be present in heaven at the same time he can be present at the earth at the same time he even can be present at the uh, hell at the same time means like uh, if i am in nepal and somebody else is in america jesus can uh, jesus christ can appear to both of us at the same time so this is what uh, actually baffled the followers this is what has baffled to most of the religious scholars in the early because they could not understand this personality of jesus christ they could not understand this unique nature of jesus christ if only they could understand the omnipresent omniscient and omni omnipotent of lord jesus christ and they would find out that jesus christ himself is son of god he is himself god the father he is himself the holy spirit so there is no distinction between the only thing is that he just presents himself in a different ways you know in the past he just present himself as god you know and in sometimes he presents himself as a uh, uh, angel of god he can be present in the fire at the same time and at the same time he can be present in the cloud of cl cloud so it's quite a unique nature you cannot just understand this personality of jesus christ he is beyond our comprehension he is beyond our understanding so i believe that today you just got some knowledge about jesus christ who he is who he is and what personality he is and why he is uh, he identifies himself as father god why he identifies himself as son of god why he identifies himself as son of man and why he identifies himself as the holy spirit because he said that you know when i will go away i will not be with you and later on i'll again be with you when he just uh, gave that promise of holy spirit to his followers means that he would be present among his followers in the form of a holy spirit and no more in the form of flesh so it's just a simple understanding but people have made it so complicated because they do not understand again 
the omnipotent, omnipresence, and omniscient of Lord Jesus Christ. I hope today you just understood this great, 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 you know, eye-opening information. And I believe that it's going to help you a lot so that you will be able to understand the reality of Jesus Christ, so that you will be able to understand the various kind of mistakes that scholars have made in the past and various kind of mistakes people continue to make today and they raise many kind of false gospels, false doctrines and they try to, you know, mislead many people in this world. Thank you so much.